In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the biggest mistakes one can make buying silver and gold. Let's get into it. How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you blast that subscribe button and get the bell notification clicked. That way you get updated with any new content. Today, what I wanted to do is kind of talk to you a little bit about some of the mistakes that I see a lot of people making when buying silver and gold. And I'm also going to share with you some of the experiences that I have had over the last four or five years. And hopefully you will be able to take at least one or two things away from this video aside from wasting your entire time watching this. So anyhow, I'm just going to jump right into it. I have a list of different things that I kind of wanted to talk about. And um, so if you see me looking off over here, I'm kind of looking at my notes on my computer. Here's one of the things I think that is a bad move that somebody can make, whether you are buying silver or gold. And this is something that I fell for not too too long ago and I kind of actually made this mistake twice but it was kind of like rolling of the dice and seeing what I got and that was when I went to a particular online dealers website like an Appmex or Jam Bullion a Monument Metal something like that sometimes in the deals or a clearance section of their website they're going to say any coin so for example let's say we're looking at silver and in my situation it was a panda uh, i was looking to buy pandas on the cheap so that way i could flip them on the auction and they had an option i believe this was monument metals they had an option any panda x amount of dollars it was cheaper than all the other options and i said you know what the chances are if i buy like 40 of them of me getting the same coin and a coin that I don't need are probably going to be slim to none. So I pulled the trigger and lo and behold, I ended up getting, uh, of course, 40 of the same panda that I did not need. And I would have been in a much better position had I have just shelled out a little bit more money and purchased the actual pandas that I needed. I also did this very recently with another online retailer, I believe Silver Gold Bull, and they had an option of buy uh, this particular, um, what was it? It was one tenth ounce gold coin, and it was the cheapest deal that they had. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I'll probably get like a Krugerrand, which in my opinion, those of you that watch this channel, you know I do not like Krugerrands, or maybe I'll get like a Philharmonic or something like that. Instead, what I ended up getting was an entire sheet of these one tenth ounce Canadian special forces coins. I mean, who knew that Canada even had special forces to begin with? Number one, number two, um, they were the coins that have like that kind of like a torpedo kind of look to them. And when I went to resell them, I knew immediately when I got those coins that it was um, a big uh, pile of poop. When I went to sell them on the auction, it was crickets. I could not sell them. And so I bit the bullet. I decided to sell them at spot. And usually if you sell gold at spot, nobody is going to care what it is because it's going to be a good deal at that particular time. So I sold them at spot. I took a loss. I didn't really take too bad of a beating. It was only like $5 per coin, 20 coins. Uh, so I lost maybe $100 on them. In the grand scheme of things, everything else that I was selling that evening kind of made up for it. But still, the lesson was learned when you go to buy, it's almost like a grab bag. When you go to buy something on clearance or deals and it's like any coin of their choice, guys, they are going to unload their dog shit coins and uh, you're going to be stuck holding them. And when you go to resell them, you're going to end up having a very difficult time and you're probably going to eat it. So just keep that in mind. You're better off shelling out the additional money and buying um, a coin that you actually want instead of trying to get the best deal. So that's, that's one thing that uh, a lot of people will do uh they're trying to get stuff on the cheap and that happens and I, even a seasoned stacker such as myself i i fell for it a couple of times so anyhow that's that's one big mistake another one now, before I continue on with talking about some of the worst stacking mistakes that I've made over the years, one of the mistakes that I have always talked about on this channel uh, was the failure to hold my Apple stock. And this was in the mid 2000s where I bought Apple at something like $45 a share. And uh, I ended up selling 75 shares 
at around 55 bucks or something like that, just to make a quick profit. Um, and then I figured, you know what, I'll buy back in at a later time. And um, I actually never ended up buying back into Apple. Um, and lo and behold, the uh, stock had split a million times. And <laughs> I essentially would have been sitting on roughly a $700,000 investment or $500,000, a, a huge number off of a piddly $3,750 initial investment. That's a huge mistake that I made. And I kind of want to tie that into um, something right now with regard to some of the mining companies that I have covered on this channel. One of them happens to be US Gold Mining. Um, the ticker is USGO. I recently had the chairman, Alistair Still, on the uh, Empire Precious Metals YouTube channel talking about all things gold, not just about the company, which is a very exciting opportunity, but also just talking about gold in general, where he saw gold uh, heading next. And there have been some really important updates with that company in just the last three weeks alone. In the past three weeks, shares of USGO, they actually closed up around 60%, and it's actually been one of the best performing NASDAQ listed companies. We will know in about a, a matter of a week or two whether or not it's going to make it. That's a really big step for a junior mining company. Also, the parent company, ticker symbol GLDG, recently bought a substantial stake in the company. It purchased $1.6 million on the open market, raising its ownership stake to 81%. So the potential Russell 2000 inclusion is a huge game changer. The ETF fund will be forced to buy shares and 8 of 10 are not for sale right now. Now this is before we even start talking about analysts covering the company because the company just IPO'd. So there hasn't really been any analyst coverage of the company just yet. Also, one of the things that Alistair was talking to me about on the channel was its Whistler project, which contains 9.4 million ounces in equivalent resources. So to put it into terms of value, today's enterprise value would actually put this at a $15 per ounce valuation, whereas three recent buyouts within the region have occurred at over $100 an ounce. And today's CEO, Tim Smith, was involved in selling a company in 2016 for $130 an ounce when gold was only 1200 bucks. And not to mention the company is actually heavy with cash. They have $19 million. I wish they would send some my way. And the company is ready to use this money to start drilling. So if you're looking for more information on the company, definitely check out their website which is goldmining.us and you can find out more information there and obviously always do your due diligence before investing. Now back to more of my stacking mistakes. I ended up buying a substantial amount of coins and collectibles from a online retailer, retailer overseas. It happened to be New Zealand Mint. I've talked about this in a previous video and it was something like... Um, not necessarily like this, but it's like a higher end collectible item. Uh, it was a whole bunch of one ounce and three ounce silver uh, Han Solo and Carbonite bars. And the problem that I encountered is that because I purchased over a certain amount, uh, the threshold can be between $700 and $800. But because I bought over that dollar amount, I ended up having everything held in customs and I had to go through such an ordeal to try to get them out of customs. I had to talk to some uh, agent with FedEx to try to get them out of It took like 45 minutes on the phone. I had to fill out these forms. I also ended up having to pay a uh, tax of like 130 or $150 fee. And that ended up eating up my bottom line. So the moral of the story is this. There are a lot of online retailers who are overseas who are completely legitimate. New Zealand Mint is a legitimate company. LPM, which happens to be in uh, Hong Kong, is a completely legit company. And they're a big retailer. And a lot of people within the stacking community will buy from them. But keep in mind, you run the risk of having your stuff held up in customs and also the the fact that those companies are overseas and on completely different time zones and because they're very expensive to call, you can get uh, stuck trying to call them if you have a, a customer service issue getting stuck with an 80 to $100 phone bill. This happened to me. I ended up having to call New Zealand Mint for something. I was on the phone with them for maybe only 15, 20 minutes. It was like an $89 phone charge just for that phone call. So anyhow, uh, don't buy high amounts of money 
uh, sorry, high amounts of silver and gold coins from overseas sources if you are not willing to deal with the customs. And guys, I'm telling you, it's quite a headache. So you're better off paying a little bit more of a premium on that stuff that you are going to want here in the States from a company that's always or already, bleh, I can't speak, already uh, have the, has those things in stock. Did that make any sense? Okay. Here's one that I hate to admit, but I'm going to kind of admit to this mistake just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, American Silver Eagles. All right. So a uh, couple things with American Silver Eagles that you could be doing wrong that you want to avoid. Number one, I would say just don't stack them right now. Uh, at the time of the recording of this video, they're going, this is what, what are we, May 23rd. Um, American Silver Eagles are going for mid 30s to upper 30s, even in the low $40 range. Um, just the premiums on them are astronomically high. I've talked about this for like a couple of years now. When I was stacking Silver Eagles, I got into stacking when they were $17.50 a piece, which is great. Um, I think the most I ever paid was like $18.50 or $19, and that was like already pushing it. But this was like five, six years ago. I ended up stacking, I would say, around 13 to 15 tubes of American Silver Eagles. Eventually, silver started to come up. This was before COVID. Um, silver prices started to come up, and or this was actually getting close to COVID. I, I, my memory escapes me, but nonetheless, silver prices started to come up. And the rate for an American Silver Eagle, they were going for around, I would say like $24, $25, $26 in some cases. I ended up selling about 8 to 10 tubes of American Silver Eagles at the $24.50 mark. Um, so we're looking at a $7 profit per coin. And what are we talking about? You know, five as a hundred per five. So we're talking like 200 coins, 200 times seven. What do we got? $1,400 profit. If my math is correct. Anyhow, made that profit and I was pleased with the profit back then. Yes. Obviously had I have held on to them until now, sure. My profit could have been so much better, but, um, one of the sayings that a friend of mine on YouTube, ECP, East Coast Prospecting, check out his channel, tell him Stormy sent you. He tells me, Stormy, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, right? Don't be greedy. So I was able to see a decent profit and I took it, okay? And, um, you know, I guess hindsight being 2020, yeah, obviously I would have liked to have held on to those a little bit longer. You know, I would have ideally loved to be selling those now at 36 to $40, but it is what it is. I saw the profits then. And, uh, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody has a crystal ball. And so I was able to make my profit, turn that into other inventory, turn that into gold for my stack. But I would say one of the things that you should not do when it comes to American silver Eagles is buy lots and lots of them in bulk at any one given moment. Because people that were buying, let's say in 2008, 2009, right? Was it 2008? It was during the Great Recession. I believe silver hit its all-time high between 2008, 2011. I, I can't remember the exact date, but it hit around like 48 bucks or something. There were a lot of people that got into silver then, and now they're upside down on the silver that they purchased. Um, they're feeling really bitter about this. Um, so buy modestly and buy it you know, incrementally over a long period of time, that way you could dollar cost average. If you were buying at the highs, you wait until things come down and eventually will average out. If you have some tremendous dips that hold for a longer period of time, you can essentially buy in a little bit more and bring your dollar cost average down even further. Kind of did that with this Punisher comic back there. I'll get into that another time, but I would say don't be greedy. Uh, and also buy modest amounts and make sure you're always dollar cost averaging. Uh, let's see. Okay. Another mistake that I made. Um, those of you that watch this channel, you know that I am big into buying and selling silver for profit. Uh, same with gold. And oftentimes there are going to be a, uh, there's going to be new releases that drop and, uh, you know, some of these releases are going to be Grand Slam home runs. Um, for example, you know, this is uh, a Grand Slam home run. This is the two ounce revolver. And I went pretty big on these two ounce revolvers. 
you know, they released for around $220. I've been selling them for around anywhere between 280 to 300 bucks a piece. And um, certain coins are going to be tremendous hits, grand slams, and you can do very, very well with uh, certain coins. Some of them happen to be some Marvel coins, in particular Spider-Man. Uh, DC has Batman that came out not too long ago. So one of the mistakes that I've made, even though I've learned this lesson time and time again, it kind of comes down to uh, issues with having enough capital to buy big positions, but I didn't buy enough of the Batman coin, the first in the series of Justice League. Those now go for anywhere between 80 to to $100 a piece. Um, I knew that they were going to do well. I bought only one tube. I've always said to myself, you know, if there is going to be a hot release, I need to buy a hundred, at least 100, but you do the math, you buy them, let's say at 30 bucks a piece times a hundred, you're looking at $3,000 just on this one particular coin. And yeah, you're going to do well eventually, but it takes time to kind of roll that out. Um, and now what has happened? That ship has sailed. Those coins now have gone. I was able to pick some up recently, a small, small batch for a, a pretty high price, but I bought them because I still think that there's room to make. So the point is of this is when there is a hot new release that you are seeing a lot of hype on social media or on YouTube, and there's a whole bunch of stacking channels reviewing a particular coin, or I'm talking about a particular coin that I think is going to do very well. And you see that I'm buying a bunch, you know, you want to really do your research, but certain coins, you know, you should back the truck up on. It's hard to pick all of the winners. Sometimes you will pick some losers, but, um, you know, that's a coin that I regret not buying more of. Um, right now, I would say the Batarang is a coin that uh, I should probably buy some more of. I bought quite a bit, but that's going to be a really good coin for resale purposes. Um, so, that is one of the other mistakes that I made. And for you, any of you that are looking to possibly flip or hold on to something long term, a hot item like that can do very, very well. Don't be too gun shy is what I would say. Uh, another big mistake that I have made that may apply to many of you watching this video, and I would say this is one of the the more annoying mistakes, and I kind of kick myself for it. The first year that I was in business as a licensed uh, bullion dealer, um, I did not realize there were things called resale or reseller certificates. And um, these are certificates that you would file with different online retailers. So for example, Atmex, JM Bullion, Provident Metals, Bold Precious Metals, uh, Silver Gold Bull, Bullion Exchanges, all of these different online retailers, you can file reseller uh, certificates with them as long as you have as long as you have a registered business and you have an EIN number, which is an employer identification number that's given to you from the federal government when you open up your um, your business. And you do have to have references and all that other stuff. However, these reseller certificates help you with taxes because what I was doing the whole first year is I was buying these coins at retail and I was paying all the tax on them. And what ended up happening is that ate into my bottom line because I was paying extra money and you know I was selling for this much. And so my profits were this, whereas I could have been down here in terms of my cost, if that makes any sense to you guys. So uh, same thing with wholesale accounts. It was one of those things I was like, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. And, you know, I kind of regret not getting into the wholesale game a little bit earlier. What is that white spot back there? Anyway, is that paint? Yeah, it's paint. Anyhow, my, my OCD, I'm looking at that thing. I'm like, what is that? So um, if you are somebody who happens to own a business already, or you are thinking about uh, getting a, a business, maybe for collectibles, whatever, look into reseller certificates and wholesale accounts. Trust me, guys, it goes a long way. Obviously, you want to speak to your CPA um, and check any sort of laws uh, by you and what state you live in. But um, that is a tremendous, tremendous savings with your bottom line. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to see if there's any other mistakes here. Um, one that I've talked about, this is a minor mistake, but buying, uh, capsules 
for uh, coins like American Silver Eagles and stuff like that. You don't need to do that. I've talked about that a million times. That's just bullion. Don't worry about that. Buy the uh, capsules, though, for your, um, I would say, collectible stuff like Marvel stuff, DC stuff, anything like this that you don't want to tone and tarnish. Um, along those lines, too, I would say don't keep things in your acrylic flips. Uh, let's see. Stuff like this. All right, these acrylic flips, a lot of you who will make purchases, whether it be at coin shops or online retailers, and uh, you'll buy the coins, they'll be sent to you in these flips. But the problem is what happens is they're folded over like this, right? The coin sits in here. And oftentimes you get an uneven um, toning along the edge and the rim of the coin, usually up here, um, just because that's where the, I guess, the most amount of oxygen is hitting the coin, perhaps. I don't know. And that may be a reaction to with the actual coin flip, but you will start getting this um, uneven toning and what have you on the coin, where the, as the rest of the coin is going to look brilliant, uncirculated. Now, one thing that you can do, which a lot of people will say, don't do this, is you can remove that stuff relatively quickly with this stuff here. And this is called easiest. Um, you can look online. There's videos of this, but essentially you can dip the coin for about five seconds. You rinse it in cold water, dab it dry, and it's as if it never happened. Always good to have this stuff for like junk silver. Um, so anyhow, those are the mistakes. I'm trying to put this down so I don't drop it and spill it. Those are the mistakes that I've made with stacking. Um, hopefully this helps some of you as cautionary tales and also just in terms of like strategy when it comes to, you know, long-term stacking and stacking at a steady rate. I'm curious as to what some of the biggest mistakes you have made when it comes to stacking silver or gold. I'm going to make a follow-up video to this talking about my greatest successes. Um, most likely people will watch this video more because people like seeing others fail. But anyhow, let me know in the comments down below, what is the biggest mistake you have made stacking silver and gold?